Coca-Cola, P-E-P-S-I. That's your smartest cola buy. Pepsi-Cola presents Counter Spy. Washington calling David Harding, Counter Spy. Washington calling David Harding, Counter Spy. Harding, Counter Spy, calling Washington. United States Counter Spy. Especially appointed to investigate and combat the enemies of our country, both at home and abroad. Tonight, the case of the photographed Fourier. Another counter spy report to the American people. Brought to you each Tuesday and Thursday by Pepsi Cola. Pepsi Cola hits a spot. Two full glasses, that's a lot. Lots more value, lots more zest. Why take less when Pepsi's best? Yes, Pepsi's best. Because Pepsi, and only Pepsi, gives you more bounce to the ounce, more real value and quick food energy, ounce for ounce, than any other leading cola drink. That's right. No other leading cola can say that but Pepsi-Cola. Proven highest quality and homogenized for finer, smoother flavor. More bounce to the ounce. That's Pepsi. Now, everybody, listen later in this program for a sensational special offer from Pepsi-Cola. Meanwhile, remember, get more bounce to the ounce. Get delicious, ice-cold Pepsi-Cola. And now, to Counter Spy. <laughs> 2 a.m. A low-hanging haze clings to the surface of New York's East River. All is quiet, except for the lapping of the water against the dock, and the occasional wail of a tugboat whistle in the distance. Suddenly, the thick silence is broken by the low purr of a motorboat engine. You see the pier number yet, Joe? Not yet, Bugs. Keep her turning over. All right. That looks like the right pair of bugs. There's a ladder at the motor. Stay with the tiller. We got enough speed to drift into position. Okay. That's it. Hold her steady, bugs, against the dock. Right, Joe. Should I tie up? I'll climb up the ladder first. Make sure it's the right pair. Like Lloyd said. He sure gets the straight dope. Yeah. Let's get him over to the edge of the pier. Then we'll lower him into the boat. Right, I'll pick up. The watchman. Come on, Bugs, behind this bale of furs with me. Yeah. Joe. Now, let him lay. We'll keep an eye on him. I'll give him one more with my foot to make sure he sleeps solid. <coughs> That's enough, Bucks. Let's get to work. There's $60,000 worth of furs on this dock, and Lloyd don't want us to miss a dime's worth. Transmit all findings to me personally. 
here at our New York field office. That is all. Starting that lead on the Bonner Fur Finishing Company. Good. Looks it. They finish the furs for a very smart New York fur salon. Lloyd's of Park Avenue. Mm-hmm. And the samples we bought there check with the laboratory reports on the stolen furs. You got a tail on Lloyd? We can pick him up now if we want to. No, no, Peters. We've got to make a thorough cleanup in this case. The crooks, the sellers, and the buyers. A lot of money involved, Dave? Well, not only the money, Peters. Our trade relations with friendly countries. These robberies are leading to ill feeling and international lawsuits. That's why I want to wash this up once and for all. So there'll be no hangover. I see. And we'll stake out this Bonner Company, get photographs of everyone who does business with them. We'll have agents with our new miniature cameras cover the place like a blanket. The company's building is located in the suburbs of New York City. You want to look it over yourself and plan the stakeout? Yes. We've got to get photographs that'll convict everyone who does business with the Bonner Company, as well as the fancy Mr. Lloyd himself. Good morning, Adele. Joseph's expecting me. We both are. He's in the private office. Well, let's go in. Joe, he's here. Huh? Ah. Oh. Hello, Mr. Lloyd. Hello, Joseph. <laughs> Ain't the newest fad up on Park Avenue these days, sporting a cane? It does it annoy you. Yeah, makes me happy. Did you get rid of the furs from that pier job? Naturally. For how much... $60,000? That's full market value. Of course, Adele. Lloyd's of Park Avenue never cuts prices. Work it over, Mr. Lloyd. I intend to. $20,000, the usual one-third. Not any longer, Mr. Lloyd. Uh, what? Adele and I have been figuring the divvy ain't right. Oh? We do the dirty work, heist the furs and process them in this stinking building out here in Queens. So? You just sit in that fancy Park Avenue saloon of yours, peddling them to beat up biddies. Air conditioned, no less. Uh, what do you want, Joseph? Air conditioning? No. Two-thirds. <laughs> Very funny. Now, if you'll step aside, I have to fit a patron at my salon. I don't want to be late. You don't leave until we settle this, Mr. Lloyd. There's nothing to settle. Step aside, Joseph. No, no. And keep your hands off me. Easy, half pike. Let go. Get down in that chair. That's better. Joseph, you'll regret this. Maybe you'll regret it more. Now, I wouldn't want to muss up that pretty face of yours. Two-thirds for us, and we're all friends again. And stop shoving that cane in my face. Look at it more closely, Joseph. Notice the opening in the end? What? Joe, with the gun. Right, girl, Adele. This cane is really a disguised gun. Lloyd. Not three inches from your throat, Joseph. Take it away, Mr. Lloyd. Back up, Joseph. That's the way. Against the wall. Now, push on this little button at the handle. Would make you a very bloody spectacle, Joseph. Joe, Adele. I don't want my hand to slip. Please, Lloyd, take it away. I will, Joseph. When you get this clear, this is my operation. I finance it. I tip you off when furs are due in. I sell them once they're stolen. You're nearly my workhorse. Sure, Mr. Lloyd, sure. You remember that? Yeah, only take that thing away from my throat. <laughs> Very well. One mistake is permitted, Joseph. I'll take it away this time. Particularly since I'll have work for you to do shortly. Okay, Mr. Lloyd, you're the boss. Same setup, same split. Bright boy, Joseph. Don't change your mind. Because the next time you see the end of this cane, a bullet will be spitting out of it. (laughs) 
Looks bad, Dave. The Barnard Company is the only building within four square blocks of these vacant lots. A flea couldn't be inconspicuous out here. Just across from the Bonner building, that newsstand right by the subway entrance. You think we can use it? Pull up to the stand. I'll buy a paper. All right. All right, morning papers. Get your paper here. Uh, son. All right with you, mister. What'll it be, mister? Times and the Tribune. Sure thing. Dave, maybe we could set an agent to take over this stand. Uh, might make these fur thieves suspicious. Chance. Here you are, mister. Times and Tribune. Thanks. Uh, keep the chain. Thanks. That's a nice spot you got here. End of a subway line, end of a bus line, no competition. You been in this spot for long? Three years. Oh, been in business a long time, huh? What's your name? Eddie Sloan. Well, good luck, Eddie. Maybe I'll be seeing you again. Sure. I'm always here, mister. So long. So long. What do you read? Let's go, Peter. What are you thinking about, Dave? Using the kid? Yes. From his stand, he could snap anyone who walked in or out of that building. Looks like our best bet. He could operate the new camera, all right. It's simple enough. That's the way I feel. Find out where he lives, his family, all about him. Then bring him in the office tomorrow. If he's as bright and as able as he seems, we'll add a slightly underage counter-spy to our staff. Bonner Fur Company. Joseph, this is Lloyd. Oh, yes, Mr. Lloyd. A little information. More furs coming in? Yes. The Bay Trading Company has a carload of furs on the way. Shipped by train across country from Seattle. They're due to arrive at the East Shore Freight Yard tonight. They won't be unloaded until morning. Officially, that is. Quite right, Joseph. They'll be in a refrigerated Yukon Pacific box car. Number 6220. 6220. Got it. Good. I'll leave it to you to make the usual arrangements. Eddie, this is Mr. Harding. David Harding? That's right, Eddie. Oh, then, Mr. Peters, you weren't conning me and my uncle. You really are counter I wasn't conning you, Eddie. Gosh. Sit down, Eddie. Well, yeah, sure. Peters, have you told Eddie and his uncle what we wanted him for? Just a little. Eddie's uncle says the decision is up to Eddie, as long as it's safe. That's fair enough. Eddie, what do you know about the counter spies? Gosh, everything. Everything? I mean, everything that's been on the radio or in the papers. I follow every case you're on. Oh, that's flattering. <laughs> Very. Oh, that last case, with, with the hijackers and those cameras, I followed it all. Well, I'm glad you did, Eddie. Would you like to see the new cameras we used? You bet. Peters, there's some cameras and packages of film in that cabinet right away. Hey, ready? Take a look at it. Boy, it's keen. You could take pictures without hardly anybody knowing you were taking them. Well, that's just what it was designed for, Eddie. In fact, that's what we'd like you to do. Me? Yes, Eddie. Gosh, me helping the counter spies. What do you want me to do, well, Mr. Well, not, not so fast, Eddie. I want to make sure you understand this might be a little dangerous. I ain't afraid. Well, you should be, Eddie. It's always good to be afraid. Then you'll be careful. Oh, now that we've slowed down, we'll go into the details. Now, first, the camera. Go ahead and pick it up, Eddie. It's a beauty. Mm -hmm. It's simple to operate. You see, Eddie, it's precision design, made to be foolproof. Because lots of times we have to use that camera under very difficult circumstances. I see, sir. Now, what we want you to do, Eddie, is take pictures of everyone who goes into that building opposite your newsstand. The fur company. That's right, Eddie. The Bonner building. Crooks, huh? Well, that's what we hope to prove by your pictures, Eddie. They're fur thieves, Eddie. And the men going in will be going there to buy stolen goods. And we want to catch the buyers as well as the actual crooks. I'll do whatever you say, Mr. Hardy. Good boy. Now, you won't be entirely alone. No? No, I've arranged to replace the agent in the subway station change booth with one of our counter spies. From time to time, he'll come up to see whether everything's all right. 
I can take care of myself. Oh, I'm sure you can, Eddie, but we'll just play it safe. Now, you'll have to conceal the camera so it won't be obvious to anyone that you're taking pictures. Oh, I... I could cover it with a newspaper. Well, the newspaper could blow away or the camera might slip out. That's right. Well, how about my change box? I use a wooden box. I could get another one, cut a hole in it, and sight it through the hole. Well, that sounds like a better idea. And I'll take good care of the camera. I won't drop it anymore. Well, don't worry about that. It's very strongly built. Well, now, Eddie, when you've taken all the films on the roll, you'll remove the roll. Mr. Peters or I will come along at the end of the day, and we'll buy a newspaper. Include the rolls with the paper. I start right away, Mr. Hardy? Right away, Eddie. Here's your camera, Eddie. Gee, thanks. And plenty of film. Now, Eddie... If you get the right pictures with this new counter-spy camera, you'll be going a long way toward helping us solve this case. In fact, everything depends on you. Now, everybody listen for the amazing Pepsi-Cola offer mentioned earlier in this program. For a few days only, you can actually get a genuine, instant-action counter-spy candid-type camera. Yes, a real super-speed snapshot camera that takes wonderful, clear, sharp, black-and-white pictures. Now yours for only 50 cents and one bottle top from Pepsi-Cola. Did you ever hear anything so amazing? And you'll be even more amazed when I tell you all the high-quality features usually found on expensive imported cameras. Genuine Plano convex double-element lens. Genuine beauty finish photographic black plastic case. 16 pictures, not just 8, on every reel of film. And mind you, that standard size film that you can get at your nearby camera store. Takes pictures one and one quarter inches by one and five eighths inches. So clear, you can actually have them enlarged. Instant eye level viewfinder that shows exactly the picture you're taking. Instantaneous one twenty fifth of a second speed shutter. Fixed, sure focus that needs no adjustment. Just the thing to take to the beach with a carton of Pepsi Cola. In fact, This is such a wonderful camera, it's guaranteed for one year against mechanical defects. It's selling in stores right now for much more, but listen, here's all you do. Send only 50 cents in coin with your name and address and only one Pepsi-Cola bottle top to Counter Spy Headquarters, Box 12, New York 8, New York. Now please print your name and address clearly and be sure to enclose 50 cents. Your counter-spy, candid-style camera will be sent post-paid. But don't delay. This offer must be limited. Send for your camera now. Remember, I'll repeat that address later. And now, back to counter-spy. There's the entrance, Joe, the East Shore Freight Yards. Drive right in, Bucks. Yeah, but there's a watchman on duty. I case. I know, just drive right in. All right. Hey, hey, you in the truck. The watchman? I heard. Stop for him. What? Stop. Now, just where do you fellas think you're going? You the yard watchman? That's right. You're the guy I want to see. I'm from Bay Trading Company. Here's my loading bill. Uh, So? We're working overtime. Supposed to pick up a load of furs from refrigerator car 6220. You know where it is? Sure. It's right down the yard a bit. I'll hop on the running board and direct you. Thanks. All right, just go straight ahead. I'll tell you when to turn. Turn right across the tracks ahead. All right, there she is. 6220. You can back right up to the doors. Thanks, Pop. It's a sealed car, you know. We'll get it open all right, Pop. Like this. <coughs> all right, come on, Bugs. Roll them over in the shadow. I'll break the seal and we'll start unloading. Oh, you got nerve, Joe, just walking right in. It's the only way to pull a job. Make them think it's legitimate and you'll even get the mayor to help load the truck. Anybody else shows up, we're just working overtime, catch? Catch? 
Now, let's get started. I got a lot of overtime to put in. A hundred thousand bucks worth. Here you are, Dave. Enlargements of the pictures Eddie took yesterday. Those cameras do a wonderful job. Yes, Peters. And Eddie's no expert, but still these photographs show every detail. Mm-hmm. You know, anybody can work these cameras. There are 32 photographs. We've identified 24 of the men as supposedly legitimate fur dealers. Well, we'll investigate and put agents on them. Tell the agents to stand by for a pickup order. Right, Chief. A couple of more days of Eddie's camera work, and we'll be ready to round up everyone who's had dealings with this mob. Kid. Oh, sure, mister. Here. Half a buck. I'll take change from the... Uh, no, don't. I'm sorry, kid. I thought that was your change box. It's a nice camera. Yeah. My hobby. Here you are, mister. Forty-seven cents. Thanks. So long, kid. Another guy. Got it. Now this guy. You take a lot of pictures, kid. Huh? I've been watching you for the past ten minutes. What's the idea? What do you mean? Taking pictures of everyone who goes into the fur company. Who says I do? Don't get wise, kid. I told you, this camera's my hobby. Take it easy, kid, or I'll break it. Go on, get going. You've got some talking to do. This, this coat doesn't seem to do anything for my figure. But, Mrs. Vanderpool, why tamper with perfection? And that, in a word, is your figure. <laughs> now, Lord. I mean it. I could show you several other fur coats we have in the salon, but this coat is simply stunning. You set it off beautifully. Uh, you, you really think so? Mrs. Vanderpool, I know women. I know furs. I know beauty. At the moment, you are the highest form of all three. Uh, <laughs> It's so wonderful to deal with you, Lloyd. You you understand me. The real me. Now, my husband doesn't... Oh, pardon me, Mrs. Vanderpool. I'll return to a moment. Of course. Lloyd of Park Avenue speaking. Oh. What? I, I see. All right, all right, all right. I'll be right over. Now, Lord. Mrs. Vanderpool, if you'll excuse me, one of the girls will take care of you. Girls? I'm so sorry. Urgent business. Oh. But I'll see you soon, perhaps for lunch sometime. Oh, lunch? That would be splendid. <laughs> I sure it would. Till then, Mrs. Vanderpool. Au revoir. Harding speaking. Saunders reporting from the subway booth, Mr. Harding. Oh, yes, Saunders? The newsboy's gone. What? Yes, Mr. Harding, I was delayed on my half an hour check. People want to change. It's been 45 minutes since I last saw the boy. 45 minutes, Saunders, I told you... Well, Mr. Harding, Look, I... never mind. Stay there on duty. Peter, did you get that about Eddie Sloan? Yes, Dave. Alert the rating squad. We've got to move in on that fur company right away. Before, it was a question of chiseling crooks and tax evaders, but now it's a boy's life. I wouldn't risk that for all the crooks in creation. Get the squad moving, fast. But you stay out here with Adele. Okay, the kids Joe. in the next room, Mr. Lloyd. All right, Joseph. And Bugs, don't think. Please don't ever think again. Well, I thought you'd want to know. That's why I brought the kid over. You please close your moronic mouth or I'll close it for you. Come on, Joseph. Stand to take care of. This is the little beast, eh, Joseph? Yeah. Who are you? I'll ask the questions. Why were you taking pictures of this establishment? It's a hobby. Don't be insolent, you little brat. 
can't talk to me like that. I'll do much worse if you don't answer my questions promptly and truthfully. I don't know what you're all excited about. The guy takes pictures and you think he was robbing a bank. Any particular reason for that reference to robbery? What? Listen, you little devil. Obviously, someone put you up to taking pictures. I wish to know who. I told you, it's my own hobby. Joseph, grab that brat's shoulders. Okay, Mr. Lloyd. Hey, cut it out. Turn him over that chair. See if a little caning will loosen his tongue. Let me go. (laughs) All right, you little beast. You ready to tell me who put you up to this? I wouldn't tell you the time of day. Very well. Joseph, we'll yeah. just... No! Mr. Lloyd! What's that? Adele, I don't... All right, you two. Stand where you are. Mr. Harding. Harding. Counter spies. Now we know the answer. Yes, Lloyd, we've been on your trail for a long time. And I got lots of pictures, Mr. Harding. About 20 guys went in this morning. Good, Eddie. When we confront them with that evidence, I'm sure they'll all be willing to talk about their dealings with Mr. Lloyd. I won't be here to listen, Mr. Harding. What? This cane pointing at the boy's throat is a concealed gun. Well, you Now, move, Mr. Harding, and I'll blow this urchin's dirty little throat apart. Joseph, relieve Mr. Harding of his gun. Okay, Mr. Harding. Thanks. Now, Mr. Harding, you'll do as I say, or I'll slaughter the brat with the greatest of pleasure. (laughs) Yes, sir. Mr. Harding. Yes, silence, you little beast. Now what, Lloyd? Start walking. In front of me. That's right. Through that door. Duck, Eddie. Let go of this cane. Watch it, Peter. I'll kill both of you. No, you don't, Joe. I'll take back. My God. Let go of my cane. Not this time, Lloyd. Close. Nice work, Peters. You got Lloyd. Couldn't shoot before, Dave. You might have gotten Eddie. Stood by the door and grabbed the cane gun when he came out. I'm one guy who's glad you did. And so am I, Peters. Come on, Eddie, let's go. We'll take Joe and Adele along. And don't forget that camera, Eddie. Those pictures are going to help increase our prison population. Now, everybody, act immediately. Send only 50 cents with your name and address clearly printed and only one Pepsi-Cola bottle top for your genuine counter-spy candid-type camera, the same type David Harding used in the episode you just heard. Send to Counter-Spy Headquarters, Box 12, New York 8, New York. That's Box 12, New York 8, New York. And remember, Pepsi-Cola hits the spot, two full glasses, that's a lot. Lots more value, lots more zest, why take less when Pepsi's best? Tune in every Tuesday and Thursday, same time, same station, to Counterspy. Listen on Thursday for the exciting Counterspy case of the international intrigue. A case involving such elements as a hidden chateau in the mountains, an X-ray picture of special teeth, and a scientist who died and came to life. Your counter-spies will never forget this attempt on one of our most precious security secrets. Be sure to be listening Thursday, day after tomorrow, for Case of the International Intrigue on Counter-Spy. Tonight's Counter-Spy program originated in New York, was directed by Leonard L. Bass, dramatized by Palmer Thompson, and featured Don McLaughlin and Mandel Kramer, with music by Jesse Crawford. Bob Shepard speaking. Counterspy is a Phillips H. Lord production for Pepsi-Cola. Enjoy some Pepsi ice cold tonight.